Buon pomeriggio. Dear IMA graduates, dear Vice President Castaldo, dear professors and honorable guests, dear family and friends, and dear those who are joining remotely today, human rights is not a job. It is a conviction. This is a quote by a human rights lawyer Asma Jahangir from Pakistan. And I believe this conviction is one of the reasons why we gather here this afternoon. Jahangir received the Right Livelihood Award in 2014 for defending, protecting, and promoting human rights in Pakistan and more widely, often in very difficult and complex situations and at great personal risk. She was one of many role models in the fight for human rights and democracy. But let me first say a couple of words about why I, I am here today. I am pleased and humbled to speak to you on behalf of the Right Livelihood Foundation. The organization was founded 40 years ago in order to honor and support people solving global problems. Each year, it bestows the Right Livelihood Award to four people and organizations who are fighting for a just, peaceful, and sustainable world. The award is not just a recognition of extraordinary achievements. It is the beginning of a common path. It is a promise of long-term support to the laureates in their struggles. We introduce them to our network of 182 laureates in 72 countries. We inform the general public about their work. We collaborate with universities and schools to educate about their shining examples. And we provide protection for laureates at risk. Many of the laureates put their life in danger in order to fight for human rights, for democracy, for peace and justice. We also use our ECOSOC status at the United Nations to engage with the human rights mechanisms in Geneva. We invite laureates to the Human Rights Council or deliver all oral statements on their behalf. We collaborate with the special pr procedures and raise attention to the laureates' causes and situation. Last year, we entered a long-term partnership with the Global Campus to strengthen children's rights and human rights education. One year ago, I was sitting here as a guest in the audience for the first time, and it is a great joy to be back. Since the last graduation, we developed numerous projects to foster research, education, advocacy, and strategic litigation to promote the rights of children around the world. By bringing together academic excellence and grassroots activism, legal expertise, and social movements, this collaboration aims to create a global network in action, fostering non-traditional modes of research and education, seeking to stimulate a new human rights wave, enhancing critical perspectives, and developing a sense of cross-regional ownership. With more than 100 universities on five continents and the 182 laureates from over 70 countries, this is a truly global endeavor. Three days ago now, on October 1st, this year's laureates have been announced in Stockholm. The four laureates are shining examples of human courage in the face of threats to democracy, racial injustice, human rights abuses, and violation of economic, social, and cultural rights. The imprisoned Iranian human rights lawyer, Nazrin Sotudeh, who we can see here on the drawing next to me, is honored for her fearless activism at great personal risk to promote political freedoms and human rights in Iran. Civil rights lawyer, Brian Stevenson, is honored for his inspiring endeavor to reform 
the US criminal justice system and advance racial reconciliation in the face of historic trauma. Indigenous rights and environmental activist Lottie Cunningham Wren is honored for her ceaseless dedication to the protection of indigenous lands and communities from exploitation and plunder. And pro-democracy activist Ales Bielajatski is together with the non-governmental organization Vyazna is honored for their resolute struggle for the realization of democracy and human rights in Belarus. This year's laureates highlight the increasing threats to democracy around the world and the important role of civil society action, legal means of defending rights, and the courage needed to stand up against injustice. In these dark times, the award seeks to shine a light on inspiring examples of hope. It aims to be a megaphone for voices that are too often silenced and a shield for laureates in danger. And it also is a reminder of the importance that you, dear EMA graduates, and everyone gathered here in this room, join and support this continuous struggle. Before closing, let me share two more reflections. When we highlight and celebrate these inspiring examples, we must never forget that for every laureate there are many more human rights defenders who don't get this kind of recognition, who risk their lives and liberty every day invisible to the public. The award also seeks to acknowledge these invisible contributions. Our nomination process is open to everyone and we encourage all of you to suggest potential candidates to us. And secondly, we must not forget that we don't need to go as far as Iran, Nicaragua, the US or Belarus to see the rise of authoritarian tendencies, social injustice, exclusion and discrimination. In Germany, where I was born, we now have an anti-democratic and racist party in all the parliaments on the state and federal level for the first time since World War II. And this is just one of many worrying developments. But it is not a reason to stick our head in the sand, as we like to say in German. The founder of the Right Livelihood Award, Jakob von Uxkull, liked to call himself a possibilist. He said he's neither an optimist who expects things to turn out well, nor a pessimist who lost hope for a better future. A possibilist, von Uxkull says, knows that a just and peaceful society is possible, but only if we stand up and fight for it. Thus, it nourished my hope to see all of you graduating here today. I was lucky to work already with two EMA graduates in our office in Geneva, and I was impressed by the academic rigor and their dedication to the cause of defending human rights and democracy. I could see that it's not a job for them, but a conviction. Grazie. Thank you very much. <laughs>